Hello, my name is Marcus, and welcome to the first lesson of the first unit of Intermediate Web Design JavaScript. Uh, so JavaScript is a good place to start our coding career um, in that it uses very accessible ASCII code. Nothing's compiled. Um, all we need is a text editor and a browser. We don't need any fancy development environments like we do with for other coding languages like Python or PHP. It's ubiquitous. You see JavaScript everywhere on all enterprise websites. It's utilized in Ajax and jQuery as well as other frameworks. JavaScript is also required. You'll see that it's a prerequisite for other web disciplines such as SAS, jQuery, Ajax. Every web professional job requires JavaScript. If you look on Craigslist uh, for web designers, front end, back end, all require a firm understanding of JavaScript. Let's start learning some JavaScript and by the end of this lesson we'll see some elements and tools that are used in a lot of different programming languages, not just JavaScript. So it's very simple to add JavaScript to your HTML documents. You just add your JavaScript between some script tags. Um, you can add those script tags anywhere. You can um, add them to the head of the document. Um, a common practice is to add your scripts to as the last element in the body. You can also include a .js file that includes all of your JavaScript for your entire site. So create yourself a new HTML document, call it whatever you like. I'm calling mine practice or exercise and uh, add that code to it and view it in a browser. So what I use is uh, brackets um, as my text editor as a free download and I use Chrome as my browser to view it in. Uh, we can add comments to our scripts, uh, just two slashes followed by whatever you want your comment to be. You can throw that anywhere between your script tags. Um, generally I thro throw it on the uh, end of the line following my code, um, sometimes the next line. And we can also use multi-line comments, so if you have big blocks of text, um, you put all of your comment text between the slash asterisk and asterisk slash. Uh, JavaScript variables. Um, all programming languages use variables, of course. Um, a variable is like a container for a value. The value is expected to change or vary, hence the name variable. And a value could be something like user input, result of a counter, time or date, etc. And we'll see all three of these examples as we work with JavaScript. Uh, no spaces or special characters are allowed in a variable name. No punctuation is allowed in variable names. Um, variables must not start with a number, but they can start with a dollar sign or an underscore. Um, in PHP, we start variable, variables with a dollar sign, so we can do the same in JavaScript if you like, if you're planning on porting your JavaScript to PHP. Variables are case sensitive, so you see those examples there, like for example, my number, if that uh, capital N was lowercase, that would be an entirely different variable name than what we see there. Um, three types of variables there are displayed, numbers, text, and boolean. And I have three statements to assign values to variables there. It's numeric, string, and boolean. All statements and expressions should end in a semicolon, and white space, white space doesn't matter. We could have as many spaces as we like between the variable name and the equal character and the value, or as many spaces as we like after the variable value and the semicolon. Uh, JavaScript arrays. Um, arrays are like variables but contain multiple values. Arrays are kind of like a range of cells in Excel or a list, like a to-do list or a grocery list. We simply use square brackets enclosing comma-separated values for arrays. In the first example, we're assigning string values, so the values are enclosed in quotes. Single or double quotes are okay. No quotes, of course, for Boolean and numeric values. The array name has the same rules as a variable name. No special characters, etc. We'll explore arrays in greater depth later on. We use operators in JavaScript to combine various values in statements and expressions. There are many things we can do with the various operators. Math, comparison, assignments, increment, concatenate, which means uh, to add strings, numbers, and Booleans to each other. Uh, JavaScript functions. We use functions to separate code. Functions are not necessarily executed at the point in the code where they are expressed. Instead, they are executed when they are called. They can be called an infinite number of times. The structure for a function is keyword function, the function name, open bracket, arguments, if any, close bracket, open curly bracket, 
code to be executed, close curly bracket, and finally, of course, the semicolon. And we'll work with functions in more depth soon. Uh, JavaScript expressions. A uh, combination of values, variables, operators, and functions to result in a value. So there's four examples there. And we've seen a bunch of expressions previously. Coding begins to get interesting once we start using conditionals. Uh, with a conditional, code is executed if a condition is true. Another piece of code may be executed if a condition is false. Or in many cases, we can ask another question if a condition is false. This allows us to jump to a particular section of code after checking for a condition. There are three kinds of conditionals in JavaScript, if, switch, ternary. Coding begins to get interesting once we start using conditionals. Uh, with a conditional, code is executed if a condition is true. Another piece of code may be executed if a condition is false. Or in many cases, we can ask another question if a condition is false. This allows us to jump to a particular section of code after checking for a condition. There are three kinds of conditionals in JavaScript, if, switch, ternary. The switch statement executes code depending on the result of many choices. We can handle any number of choices with if, else, and else, if statements, but the switch statement is much easier to read and understand. Try it out. Enter this code between your script tags in your HTML document to see how it works. Also, you can try a different value for the vegetable variable, too, if you like. Also, you can try a different value for the vegetable variable, too, if you like. The question mark or ternary operator is a very concise version of an if-else statement. The question mark acts like the if, the colon acts like the else. Try it out. Add the example to your document to see how it works. Also, type it out to have some experience with JavaScript syntax. Looping repeats an expression until a condition is met. Loops are frequently used for populating cells in a table or items in a list with values from an array. The three types are while loops, do while loops, and for loops, which we'll see soon. The while loop checks the value of a variable and executes code while the statement is true. The while loop stops executing the code once the statement is no longer true. Go ahead and add the example to your document and try out the while loop in conjunction with the increment operator. The do while loop is essentially identical to the while loop, except that it checks the value of the variable after the code runs once. Go ahead and try out the example. We enter three parameters for each for statement. We saw all three of these with the while loop and the do while loop. The three statements are initialize the value of the variable, check the value of the variable, modify the variable, execute the code depending on the result of the second parameter, the condition parameter that is. Again, go ahead and try out the example by typing it into your HTML document. This concludes Lesson 1 of Unit 1 of Intermediate Web Design. We learned a little bit about the structure of JavaScript and had a quick glance at variables, arrays, operators, and functions. We got to experience coding the three types of conditional statements and loops. All of these elements are used in other programming languages, so consider this JavaScript unit as a sort of programming fundamentals unit as well. We will be experiencing all of these concepts again, and at the end of this course, we'll be creating an industry standard JavaScript application that will work in conjunction with PHP and MySQL, resulting in a dynamic web 2.0 application. Reading the slides and listening to me speak will not take you very far along your coding journey. You must actually code. So try out these practice examples, enter them into your HTML document, remember to add comments, Explain to yourself what is happening in your code and it will help you learn. Refer to the notes for this lesson for more information and a ton of resources.